let's talk about strategy for testing series. Now, we've learned a whole bunch of different tests. And when you do the homework questions, usually the homework questions come from a particular section. But in this section, we really want to give you a series. You don't know where it comes from and have you apply the appropriate test to show whether the series converges or diverges. So the first thing I would say is I would run a quick test for divergence in your head. In other words, you could ask yourself, you know, what does the series basically look like? Basically, I'll put that word basically in quotes, look like. Once you know what the series basically looks like, then you can, um, you can take a limit in your head almost, and that would be a test for divergence. Okay, when I say what does the series basically look like, I basically mean look at the leading terms in the numerator and the denominator. All right, that's the test for divergence. So um, when you get a good feel for limits, you get a good feel for what a series basically looks like. Once you know that that general term doesn't go to zero, you can automatically say it diverges. If it does go to zero, then you got to keep moving. Okay. So the second thing would be is to determine if it's one of the common series that you understand well. So when you look at it, let's say it basically looks like a geometric series, for example. If you have a geometric series, that's great because you understand geometric series well. Uh, if you have a P series, that's also great because you understand P series well. So just as a quick reminder, absolute value of R being uh, less than one means the series converges for a geometric series. For a P series, if P is greater than one, this means the series converges, okay? So I guess the first thing I do in general is I try to see, you know, what does the series basically look like? If the limit doesn't go to zero, you're done. If it really looks like one of these two series, um, if it is one of these two series, then you're done. If it only basically looks like one of those two series, then what you could do is you could try to apply the limit comparison test. So um, I guess I really like the limit comparison test just because I don't mind taking limits and I'm into identifying what the series basically looks like. Uh, it's pretty easy to identify when a series is alternating because you should have either a negative one to the n term or a negative one to the n plus one or negative one to the n minus one. These would make the series alternating. And when you have that, you can obviously run an alternating series test. All right. Uh, when your series involves factorials or constants raised to a power, you know, you could try a, something raised to a power. You could try a ratio test. So, Ratio test is a test that students love to run. Really, the factorial thing is a dead giveaway that you want to uh, run a ratio test. If your series AN is really, you know, maybe some complicated expression raised to some power n, well, if it's some complicated expression raised to the power n, then we would love to take the nth root. Right, so I would use the root test for that. All right. Only when all of these other things have failed do I actually try the integral test. Um, if you're very experienced at integrals, sometimes you can look at the integrand, I'm sorry, the, um, the general term, and you can see it as a function, and you can almost immediately identify you want to do some sort of u substitution. So Usually for the integral test, I find that it's, uh, you know, look for the obvious 
U substitution. Um, so I don't know, that's something that really only comes with uh, repeated practice that you can just look at something and immediately tell that you need a U substitution. So hopefully your integration skills are at that level where you could just look at something and tell. All right. Sometimes a series is tricky. It doesn't seem to fit any of these other tests. In that situation, a lot of times I like to try to run a comparison test. Uh, there is still definitely a skill in knowing what to compare to, but a comparison test is really a pretty general test. It's pretty wide open. You're just using logical arguments to either say, oh, you know, my an is less than some other thing, which is less than some other thing, which is less than some other thing, or maybe it goes in the opposite direction. But hopefully you arrive at some known series and some known series over here, and then you could use the appropriate uh, argument to argue whether your series converges or diverges. I feel like kind of a jerk writing number nine. I mean, try again, try something else. This is just the reality of the situation. I mean, sometimes you gotta zip through this list over and over again, either because you, you made a mistake or you don't really see how it works. Um, it's just kind of like integration, you know, both integration and convergence of series. These are not easy things to work with. That's why this is a second semester calculus class, right? Okay, everyone, we have tons of examples that we're going to look at in class together. Take care.